The bottom line up front on seeing the cherry blossoms in Washington, D.C. First thing to consider is that peak bloom can vary year by year, so the National Park Service will update you on social media or however you get your news on when peak bloom is going to occur, and that's when you should come and be aware that peak bloom means peak bloom of the Yoshino cherry blossoms, which is what you see around the Tidal Basin and East Potomac Park, which just so happens to be number one and number two places to see the cherry blossoms, but Maggie and I have lived here for three years as locals, and we have some other spots we can show you to see the cherry blossoms. So these are the Smithsonian Gardens and we just wanted to zip through here real quick early this morning to show you basically what you can see here. It's mostly Japanese magnolias which actually bloom about two weeks before the Yoshino cherry blossoms and the other cherry blossoms but this place is extremely beautiful today but two weeks ago for sure so if you don't know exactly when you're going to make it to DC to see the flowers and maybe you can't make it during peak bloom for the cherry blossoms you could always swing through here. Um, a lot of people don't know about it but it's it's very pretty. The Smithsonian Gardens are some of my favorite in DC because you can see the Japanese magnolias, the Washington Monument, the beautiful castle, and then if for some reason um, you don't see the magnolias, then you'll get to see all the tulips and the moon garden is really pleasant here. We'll show you that it has dragonflies. We're here at the Tidal Basin. Early in the morning, the Tidal Basin is the main show of the cherry blossom season because you've got hundreds of cherry blossom trees wrapped all the way around this Tidal Basin. They are the Yoshino cherry blossom, which is a pale white uh, flower, and intermixed is a, a mutation hybrid, I believe pronounced Akibono, which is Japanese, and that is actually the pink, but there's not as many of those. Like in the, the National Mall area, 70% of the trees are Yoshino cherry blossoms, and then you've got interspersed between that is like the Akibono, which is the pale, which actually gives you the pale pink color intermixed with this. We're here early in the morning, and so it's not super crowded. They're coming. This path around the Tidal Basin, you should definitely walk this and see this from every angle, but just be aware that the, the branches hang low over the path, so you're not going to be able to run it, you're not going to be able to bike it, you're going to have to duck under some branches and stuff, and it's just going to be flooded with people, um, but it's worth it. If you're an out-of-towner and you're coming into DC to see the cherry blossoms, you're probably wondering, what is the parking situation? I will tell you, there is no parking situation. The very limited parking, especially around the Tidal Basin, is gonna be used up for the Cherry Blossom Festival, which is why all this is unoccupied. And then there is some parking over there in East Potomac, but it's just along the side of the road and it gets jammed up. Like, millions of people are coming here to see these. So our recommendation is find somewhere to park in the city, a parking garage, you can enjoy the city, and then make your way here via bicycle. They have the Capital Bike Share. You can rent scooters or you can you can use the two tools that God gave you, your legs, and you can walk yourself here, and you can walk yourself over there. It's beautiful, and you'll have more time to enjoy things. You don't have to worry about your scooter and worry about your bike and blah, blah, blah. Just walk. There's also the Metro, which is super accessible, and you can get off at um, LaFont Plaza or the Smithsonian and just walk right over here. Stop the battle within your soul. To go get the shot. East Potomac Park. East Potomac Park, we would say, is the second best place to see cherry blossom trees. Maybe, maybe the best place. So, over at the Tidal Basin, I talked about parking. Here is your best chance at actually being able to park on the side of the street. Here, there's some parking lots. We're here 
midday on a Wednesday and already the parking is starting to fill up and you're starting to get busier. But if you were to get here early, you probably could park. What is it? More cherry blossoms and just pretty blue. Make sure you pay attention to the parking signs and then you could walk around here. Um, if you decide to drive it, later in the evening, even on weekdays, this will be jam-packed with cars. You'll be in line and it really just, you can't control your pace and you, you shouldn't stop and take photos and stop all the 50 cars behind you. So it's just, it's a thing. If you don't want to walk or be outside or if the weather's not good, then sure, drive. But just know that parking could be tough unless you're here early. But this is a very pretty area and it's a great place to go for a run if you like to run. What's nice about the Capital Bike Share is that they have an app and it will tell you where the stations are full or they're empty. So you want a full station if you want to find a bike that you want, whether that's electric, manual, or a hybrid of in between. And then you want to look at the app to see which stations are empty, so that's where you could uh, park your bike and then go walk around and enjoy DC. Just because we're showing you the Tidal Basin and East Potomac and some other spots that we like to go to look at the cherry blossoms, they're also just kind of all over DC, mixed in here and there between buildings and all the green spaces. But we're gonna show you like the places that are known, go look at cherry blossom. But just here in front of one of the museums, Smithsonian's, there's a nice collection of 16, 16 cherry blossoms, give or take five. You'll see them as you go from bike, Capital Bike Share to Capital Bike Share uh, um, racks, the racks is what they call them. Sorry, my hair looks crazy. No, no, no. Okay. Apparently you can't walk on the grass. They told me to get off the grass. the Basilica, the Catholic University of America, I think is what it's called. And you'll notice that there's not a lot of people here and all of the cherry blossoms are in full bloom. It's absolutely beautiful, which is why I wanted to tell you about it because it's one of the unknown places to see the cherry blossoms. So I fact checked the Capital Bike Share prices. It's a dollar to unlock the bikes and then five cents for every minute. So you could do about a 20 minute ride for $2. There you go. Just slightly northwest of the Washington Monument, there's a little grove of cherry blossoms here. And for some reason, every year you'll find people, you know, taking photos and stuff, but people tend to chill out underneath these. And that's exactly what people are doing now. There's hammocks, there's blankets. It's directly south of the White House and you can't miss it. You'll see it. Some people like to catch snowflakes in their eyelashes, but I like to catch cherry blossom petals. So at the Arboretum, unlike the Tidal Basin in East Potomac where you can find a few varieties of cherry blossoms, there's over 70 varieties of cherry blossom trees here. The, the, the tour, if you will, is slightly over three miles. There's like 27, 28 stops with little placards. And obviously there's some sort of information you can dial into because it tells you what kind of trees there are. So all sorts of varieties of cherry blossoms if you are more into the educational part of um, being, being an arborist. Arborist, is that right, I think? A tree person? Arborist, professional tree person. But I will say, compared to the Tidal Basin and East Potomac, things haven't quite bloomed here yet. So in the next week or two, this is gonna be incredibly beautiful, and then the Tidal Basin will probably be mostly just green leaves. So it kinda, it happens in phases, and I don't really know why, but it's just based on sunlight and temperature, and the trees do things according to their own schedule. This one, though, you could hear the buzz. It is like swarming with bees. That's why flowers happen to pollinate and, and nature, so. Now we're at Dumberton Oaks. We're specifically here to see the gardens because we were told that there's lots of neat cherry blossoms at these gardens. It was recommended 
It was $7 to get in. We did not expect that. We had to buy a ticket on our phone real quick. That's because it's free during the winter season, but the winter season ended seven days ago. This is absolutely worth the seven dollars. Very pleasant, and it's like a secret hidden garden in DC. My favorite kind of cherry blossoms, the ones that are like super, super pink. And mm-hmm. <laughs> My favorite cherry blossoms, if I can choose one, is the weeping cherry blossom, and they're brighter pink. We're back at the Tidal Basin for sunset because this morning we didn't have blue skies, we didn't have good lighting. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's even more beautiful when the sun's hitting these flowers. We just talked to a national park ranger and he told us that even though this is extremely pretty right now, that it's not considered full bloom. He said that tomorrow, most of this they'll consider full bloom. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope this helps you plan your trip to see the cherry blossoms in Washington, D.C. Um, good news, we're gonna start shooting more videos if you're a long time subscriber. I know lots of people have been commenting, like, why did you abandon the channel? We didn't abandon the channel, we paused the channel, but we're gonna start making more travel videos because that's what we really like to do. Okay, bye.